All right, good morning all. Welcome to Novalug. The, uh, today we have uh, Williams, sorry, William Giddings uh, talking to us about TCL scripting. Personally, I'm looking forward to this. I haven't thought of TCL in quite a while, so looking for a refresher. Um, so William, go ahead and uh, please pick it up. Okay, right. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for having me. Um, and uh, uh, I've just got my title slide there just to open things up. But if anyone's got any questions as we go along, then please um, um, do raise your voice. Don't wait till the end <clears throat> because uh, I like to feel as though I've got uh, uh, living people in front of me rather than just talking to uh, my monitor. Okay, so I'll move on to the, the first slide. Uh, this is a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> um, I've been a, a member of uh, SLUG since around about 2018 um, in, a, as a rather intermittent attendee because it's a little bit of a way to drive. But now it's online, then uh, I'm able to make the meeting more regularly. Um, my background is sort of somewhat academic-ish. Um, I've got a PhD in theology from King's College London. And uh, part of my uh, interests and pursuits uh, lies a strong interest in digital humanities that's making books and language and uh, um, humanities resources available online. I'm now semi-retired um, but I still do a little bit of academic research once in a while and uh, my uh, great love is uh, translating canonical texts from Chinese into English. Uh, my last job was as a college lecturer and an awards body moderator. And uh, whilst I'd uh, other kits before 1982, my real first computer was an ACT Sirius, which was uh, known as the Victor 9000 in the States. I don't know if anybody in the group remembers those. It was invented by uh, Chuck Peddle and was originally going to be flogged by a Commodore, but he turned his back on them. In the late 1980s through to uh, the uh, noughties, I used to work in uh, television graphics and system support. And then lastly, I moved into uh, production and training. Uh, <clears throat> I started to use C programming language originally to build uh, geometric models and animation scripts for the uh, uh, 3D animation systems I was involved with. It, it's a now defunct system called Spacewood Matisse. Uh, like many competitors back in those days, uh, <clears throat> Quantel sued the arse off them. Uh, my first installation was Slackware around about 1994 but now I use Ubuntu 20 and um, I still love my um, uh, traditional looking desktop. So I've stuck with Mate. Um, I've always had a, a long time interest in computational linguistics. And as you can see there, I've built my first rudimentary translation engine on an old Amiga 1200 back in the 1990s. It was a bit of fun and uh, didn't know anybody else was doing that sort of thing at the time. But lo and behold, uh, there's a lot of work on computational linguistics going on nowadays. Uh, nowadays, I develop my own tools uh, using um, the C programming language and Tickle. And because I like it, um, I use uh, GTK plus rather than nowadays using the TK and I'll explain more about that later. Um, I have my own page on the Ticklers wiki. Um, I'm still an avid user of it but I don't post so often nowadays. Um, anybody who uses Linux will have uh, iBus or if you've got an old installation sim on there which enables you to uh, type in uh, different language sets and everybody will get a copy of a configuration file which I contributed to the M17M project a long time ago which enabled uh, users of a QWERTY keyboard to input uh, romanized Indic languages. Um, the 
most recent collaborative project I did in programming sense was producing something called the Sanskrit Pama, which was uh, aimed at what's called the lemmatization of Sanskrit compounds, which is breaking very long words down into the dictionary entries. So um, um, there'd be a big slant, not just on Tickle, but later on using Knuckle, which I'm the current maintainer of, which offers uh, uh, Tickle bindings to the uh, GTK API, which means that we've got fully uh, GTK compliant um, uh, applications rather than still having a 1980s motif type look. So this is my own personal project that I work on, all written in, in Tickle, uh, using uh, Knuckle as the, the uh, uh, bridge to the uh, GTK API. And uh, I was using this app earlier on today. And as you can see, I've listed that it uh, has over 900 widgets. Uh, all running happily together, which uh, makes it quite a substantial project. And this is named after a, a famous uh, translator from the Tang Dynasty called Jumarosha, and the acronym JMLS. Right, so move on to the main thrust, which is playing with strings. So this is a, an introduction to the TK, uh, TCL TK scripting language. And my audience may have heard of Tickle, but never actually used it. Uh, uh, TK API, so what do I do? I use a bit of a uh, little line or two of uh, uh, Tickle scripting inside my C code and then just run that. Works a treat. Okay, so um, seeing as we going to have some uh, previous experience in programming. I'll, I'll, I'll just assume that we're familiar with the, 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 uh, the control um, keywords that I've listed there. I won't read them out, just read them for yourselves. And um, the great thing is as well that uh, uh, the general function of most tickle commands are self-explanatory. So if you use the word string, you expect to be dealing with a string. If you're loading something, you expect to be loading data from somewhere. Um, and much of the power of Tickle lies in subcommands. So whilst there's an a, a, a ample distribution of uh, the commands themselves, each command has a whole pile of other uses that can go with it. So for instance, we've got string reverse. And I think the word reverse speaks for itself. So the strength lies in its extensibility and uh, packages, whether they're pure C uh, or pure tickle, sorry, or C compiled SO files are easily used and um, piping in and out of other packages, which may, uh, or applications running in the background, which may not be written in, in C or, or, um, or tickle can be used, um, perhaps pile of, system resources which are written in Python. Makes no, makes no difference. We can just run these things as we want. So um, we would uh, load in extra uh, code using a package, require a load or a source command. Right, um, so we can start dealing with um, uh, the strings and start playing with them, chopping them up and exploring with them in different ways. It's uh, well worth drawing attention to what's known as the dodecalogue of uh, Tickle. This is not in the main documentation itself, but which is something that's developed as an idea on the Tickler's wiki. And uh, these are uh, 12 keywords and phrases which are used to describe the features which give Tickle its unique flavor. So I'll let you just have a look through those. Uh, but what I will mention is that as we go through, you will see mention of the dodecalogue uh, words in the various slides, uh, so we can draw attention to what's actually happening. Okay, so I'll move on to the next slide. 
so um, so um, setting variables and so these are some very simple first idea commands um, in in tickle um, it, you have an operation and then um, the variable name and then the data you want to assign to it so we've got their set for name William set middle name James and you can see with Anne James I've got uh, braces uh, that's basically offering the same uh, functionality but if I had uh, name uh, William James I'd have a space in the middle and tickle would see the space as a word limiter so putting the braces around it means that uh, uh, it will treat whatever is between the braces as a, a a single word, if you like. So we can um, um, do operations in the same operation in different ways. You can see there, I've got in the third uh, example there, I've got set surname Giddings in inverted commas. And then the fourth one, we've got the instruction list. And that will return... Um, a uh, string which is encapsulated in 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 the braces so within within the interpreter each line has words which could be commands it's uh, based based upon the command that we've called uh, words on that line can be treated differently so uh, it could be text numbers decimal values hex escape codes and even substitution strings. It really doesn't matter when this information is being handled within the script. It's when it goes down to um, um, a command level or a customized procedure will um, some type of uh, data typing be implemented. The use of uh, square braces there uh, denotes that the contained string is actually a command which will need to be evaluated first and its results substituted before the overall line of the script is executed. So as we can see there in the line which says given names, we've got a list in square brackets and then William James. So when the interpreter looks at that line, whatever's in the square braces will be uh, evaluated and the result substituted in that line. So it will end up um, um, being interpreted as set given names, brace, William James, close brace. So uh, we can see there, double quotes defines a string, which can include a command. So we can nest a, a command within a string, or it can be used for variable substitution. And that's really, really useful for um, uh, scripting purposes in response to uh, various events that uh, can occur within the program operation. Um, but the important thing is that when we see braces, it denotes a string which is known within TCL as a literal string in which a command substitution or, or a variable substitution cannot take place, it's not permitted. Um, in the previous examples, the uh, commands have been separated by new lines, but uh, the semicolon can also be used to denote the end of a command. So, for example, we can have set William and then uh, semicolon set middle name James. So we've got two instructions on, on one line. That's also very useful if we want to put comments in our, in our script. So we can see we've got two alternatives there. We've got uh, uh, a hash with get name followed by name. So it speaks for itself, really, um, but a necessary comment, you might say. But it's to illustrate the point. But then we could also um, attach additional comments. So I've got there, set William J. Giddings, semicolon, hash, the ball below. So we can um, use the... Um, the um, um, semicolon uh, for an, uh, in, a, in a different sort of helpful way. So extra long commands can be split over multiple lines by using um, the reverse slash. 
And this is useful for commands with lots of options or for code beautification. Uh, in, the, in the example that follows, uh, uh, percent %x, etc., are GUI event substitution strings. So, for instance, there we can see this would um, be quite a, a long single line if it was uh, uh, not uh, wrapped in some sort of way. And using backslash um, uh, is very useful and uh, can be used to help make the, the code easy to, to read. Um, what I like about it is that um, I want to be free to put my indentation in. I don't want the scripting language to impose a format on me. William, a question. Yes, sir. I see forward and backward, left and right, double quotes. Is that significant? Um, left and the um, no, I, I you see, I just um, um, typed up this um, uh, slides, Roger, in my um, word processor. So um, it's actually put open quotes, close quotes for typing purposes. They just simply should be the the plain uh, shift shift two. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Um, so um, with regard to uh, what is actually happening, if you see where it's got uh, percent %w configured uh, data, so that's a config configurable parameter, and uh, uh, the result of the button press is that we want to store as the data uh, the, uh, the mouse pointer xy coordinates, and the percent uh, string uh, and the substitutions that are going to take place there uh, for the X and the Y. So um, the, the, the script, uh, the, in this case, the uh, knuckle script, uh, will look to swap those out for real values. Um, and um, the, um, uh, the quotation marks facilitate that. So um, with regard to backslash, backslash substitution, we can use these for new lines, tabs, and carriage returns, and other escape sequences which is which is useful of course um, because then we can have uh, multi-line strings and just set them out um, through a bit of uh, formatting on a single line so as I've got there set contact Boris Johnson 10 Downing Street London uh, with new lines in there so let's uh, have a few uh, um, conundrums to work with so we've got that set surname well what will that do? Is it going to set it as an empty value? Well, no, it won't. Uh, what we do tend to find is that um, there is no strict grammar imposed on um, Tickle. So um, whilst we've before looked at set as a command which will assign a value to the variable surname, um, if we just type in set surname, it will return the value of surname. So the example I've got there is puts set surname, and it will return the word Giddings, assuming that we've got um, that defined as per our uh, examples earlier on. So this is really, really useful. The string substitution can be very useful for redirection. So, right, for instance, there I've got set new variable, set old variable. Now, and you can see it's in in in, uh, in um, um, square braces. Now, what that will do, of course, is return the contents of old variable to and assign it to new variable. And um, um, it can be used in pretty much the same sort of way in which we can set. Uh, uh, handles on pointers in C and uh, I find that really useful when I'm coding because I may want to change um, scripts in, in when uh, for, for a signal response uh, on a widget and uh, being able to for instance set a procedure name as a variable um, uh, as a named variable is very helpful. 
So empty strings are possible though. Um, so if we do have an empty string, um, just setting it to an empty value will not get rid of it. What we have to use is unset. And so the command unset will remove the, um, the variable with the, the, the label surname from its uh, list of um, variables, internal variables. So some common mistakes that we can get when we're using tickle is um, to try and um, double quote, uh, double um, sync, uh, string everything. So for instance, we've got their set old variable five and set new variable uh, dollar dollar old variable. And so when we look at that, we think, oh, that will substitute the content of old var and then pass it as another string. Uh, that, that won't happen because um, new var um, is um, not what we've been working with. It, it'll just come up with dollar uh, five because what has happened is a process of, of concatenation. So we've effectively put dollar and in front of the value of new var and then returned that, which is printed out. Okay, so, um, so substitution doesn't bring the results that one might always expect. Even, even um, trying to play with um, uh, quotes will um, cause problems. L trying to enforce substitution around Nuvar uh, with uh, quotes and then putting a dollar sign and trying to attempt substitution again with, with more um, Options. We can't, um, for instance, um, see NuVar as a as a variable rather than the, the contents of the variable, and we'll throw up an error. But the great thing is, uh, if you got something wrong, Tickle will always give feedback when you make a mistake. And uh, there's the first of my little graphic inserts that uh, I'm sure John Alexander knows who that is. Is he there? Anyone know who it is? No. It's Cadfile, Brother Cadfile from uh, Shrewsbury Abbey. If you've got a problem that needs sorting out, Cadfile's your man. Okay, so um, we can't use backclass substitution either. So we can't try and work around. Um, this idea of nested uh, quotations. So you can see there, I've got some other examples. At the end of the day, if we try and make these substitutions, then um, we may end up with something which uh, becomes a command. So for instance, I've got there the uh, instruction subst, which is to enforce a substitution of, of the variables but because we've got two dollar signs together the the first dollar sign in the sequence will always remain there and so it will return an error so let's have another little look at these here so what will the value contained by a b after the following line of code is executed so we've got set A, and then we've got set I is one, then incra one, and, in, sorry, that should be lowercase i on the second one. I missed that, sorry about that. Incra I, and then we put A. What do we think it might be? Do we think it will be uh, three? Mm, not really. It'll be one, two, three because the order of substitution. What will happen is that it will um, 
put work this out as one because set i is one and substitute it in this position and then we've incremented i again so that will be a value of two which will be substituted in this position and then i'm oh, sorry about that that should have been lowercase it will increment i again and put three in that position so the result will be one two three it will not be three so it's um really important to get the order of substitution correct when um, working out things on the command line and so finally argument expansion occurs when open brace asterisk closed brace precedes a string um, because what it does then it presents the following string as a list of words to a command not just simply as a single string so to put it another way a string is not treated as a single um, as a single word but a list of se space separated words now that's really really useful for building up various um, uh, options and command processing um, strings so um, if we look at the the following example which uh, is a bit of a bit of a nightmare to read to start off with we've got command whatever that's going to be a and then a value then we've got um open brace asterisk close brace open brace b and then close open bracket so square bracket c close square bracket close brace d open brace asterisk close brace open then a variable e f g once again in braces and then more closed braces but using the asterisk will separate what follows and present it as um, a discrete variable so we can see there with that would uh, be the same as command a b and then a, a literal not the result returned from the command c then the value d and then a literal dollar e not the substituted dollar e f and then a string consisting of two space separated letters which is uh, quite helpful uh, this type of um, uh, uh, structure is very very common when we're trying to run a background process in in c sorry in tickle because we can build up a string and pass it to an uh, uh, an exec command to run the background task um, but if it's a single string it will pass it as a, a single value when in fact we want the contents of that single string sent as a separate um, values uh, to uh, as, as a variable argument list okay so what we can do now is take one string we've had a look at our dodecalog so uh, we've, we've touched on all those 12 points but now we can uh, take a string and manipulate in a number of ways so if we take um, the string forename william middle name james and surname giddings what does it look like in the first instance it's a tagged list and if you got that one right, give yourself a biscuit. So um, we can use this as our little bit of data. So if we set that string and assign it to the um, variable data, we can start picking out and processing what's contained in it. So if there's lots of white space, we won't worry about it because that acts as our word separators. So, for instance, um, um, let me just go back a second. Sorry, uh, I think. Um, ah, let me. Uh, let, uh, yes, I'll have to come back to that one later. That's out of sequence. I'm sorry about that. So, we can use it to create an array. Just make a note of it, uh, slide 23. 
Um, so we can use it to create an array. So using the array command, we can uh, set the subcommand set and give it an array name, literally name, and then pass the string forename William, surname Giddings, and it will create an internal array. And if we treat that as a uh, um, any other string, we can put the contents of the array element forename, and it will give us William. However, in, in Tickle, um, arrays are one dimensional and users need to implement their own multi-dimensional multi array handlers. If someone needs something very, very sophisticated, then it would most likely be the case that uh, you would uh, rely upon the creation of a, a custom um, tool, perhaps written in C, that could be loaded into the interpreter. So the um, thing to bear in mind when using an array is that the data is not always stored in the order in which it's created. So whilst my string uh, uh, might be forename William, uh, surname Giddings, and create two elements, forename and surname, it doesn't necessarily mean that, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the the, the uh, memory assigned will be literally forename or surname. It could be surname or name. So we can uh, retrieve the array keys, which are the tags in the, in the string, by typing in array names and then the name of uh, my variable, which is name, and it will return those uh, tags. Very helpful. And uh, we can build up strings by um, string substitution. So we could set array name, name, forename, and then give the literal forename, middle name, and surname um, as a variable. And you can see we've here got backslashes inside uh, the string to note that these now become literals within within that um, string otherwise if we didn't put the backslashes in there this would uh, throw an error so we can use a list command to return correctly substituted braced enclosed strings uh, if in doubt when we've got an issue like this uh, where with um, open uh, and closed quotes it just very often uh, is more sensible to use the list command and then we can um, um, ignore the use of these uh, back, uh, backslashes. Or even better still, we can um, use embedded lists, as used in this example here. Okay, so um, uh, with regard to our array, it can be useful to print the contents out to the standard out, which is useful during testing. So if I use the pArray command on name, it will return a list of the various elements. So in this case, we've got name, forename, equal William James and surname Giddings. We can also return the entire array as a list. So now we can take an array as a collection of uh, related variables and pulling a list out of it. So in this case, we would use array get, and what that will then do, as you can see, return the array element name and the value for each of those items. Um, the array get command is uh, really useful as it allows the contents of an array to be passed as a single argument to a procedure, or it can be used in in a processing loop. So the little example I have there is using the for each command, and um, what we can do is start to chop up the string that we're going to get, uh, or rather list of uh, in the, uh, the list that will be returned uh, and work uh, on a pair of variables at a time. So we can see there 
uh, <clears throat> when we uh, use the array get command, um, it will ret return basically <clears throat> a forename and surname, and then we can use a switch uh, com command to decide what to do with that. So the natural thing there would be to do something with the value. We can also work uh, with strings as lists, as I mentioned. So we can set my list, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We can retrieve and search for items in the list. So I can set an index of three and then get that value three out of the list using the Lindex uh, um, command. So I offer up first the, uh, the string and then the index value, and it will pull out the third item, well, pull out the fourth item, because it starts at zero, doesn't it? But it, the, the value with um, third index. So A will be zero, B one, C two, D three. And with range, we can pull out a range of elements. From, uh, in this case, uh, index naught to three, that will give us A, B, C, D. Uh, and we can even search within that list, which is also very useful. So if we search for uh, string D in my list, then it will return the position of it, which is item number three. So we've got other list tricks up our sleeve as well. So we can reverse lists and we can sort lists we can insert items into the list we can append the list we can replace ranges within the list so that's a, an interesting one there you see he's got l replace and then the name of the list um, and then <clears throat> um, start range end range which is uh, positions naught and one and then those will be substituted with the values a b and then we can also um, set a list so we've got lists set and um, we set individual pointers uh, sorry individual values in that list pretty much like list insert Right, <clears throat> we can uh, split lists into variables. And so here's another li li little example. So we've got set list, um, iced, sugar, jam, and we can now assign value values to that list. So you can see there, using the, the, the L assign command, we can use the string, iced, sugar, jam, and in one fell swoop, assign the individual uh, words to variables in this case uh, elements of an array and then we can pull those elements out and then finally um, we can uh, start to work with strings using the dict command and um, Dic stands for dictionaries, and um, whilst it was possible to do these type of operations in pure TCL, um, a while back it was um, suggested that um, this type of tag list was so useful and widespread that it should be recoded in C and incorporated into the, the main core. And what we've got here is a simple um, variable data and it contains a relatively complicated string and as we read through it we can see that we've got dad and then open brace close brace after 48 and then within it a tag list for name surname date of birth and then we can repeat that for other elements of that dictionary. So these become the keys and these become the values. 
so <clears throat> we can build up a little bit of a database but what, what we have to bear in mind is that uh, uh, as although they're strings and strings could contain any value um, before they can be treated as a dict as a dictionary the, these must be a list with an even number of members uh, and the odd values are keys and the even values or the even elements rather are the values and so this can be used pretty much like a, a simple database and individual records can have uh, variable numbers of fields which is quite exciting so if we want to input data of our own we, we need no predefined field mask and records can have individual records can have unique field names so this is uh, great as well uh, and also as everything is a string there's no need to have any data typing so um, um, there would be no data errors at a naive level, but if uh, it's required to um, input integers, then um, the string command will actually test for integers. So um, all that level of, of trapping is, uh, uh, is, is possible. Um, if someone is building up large amounts of data, it is possible to use library procedures to import import and export actually dicts as either xml or json files so this is very convenient as well for storing application configuration settings to disk so you could imagine if you've got a number of parameters and you store them in a, in an array or in a dict all that you need to do is to save those out as a, as a straightforward dump and there's no need to do any pre-formatting simple simple operation okay um so i've got that dicks can also be converted into arrays uh so uh, we can set family data and we can put the mother's element uh, uh, look for the key mom and then it will draw out the data for us so um, when when i use um, 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 these things for uh, my, my work i have a small translation engine and um, i easily switch my data between lists dicts and arrays depending on what i want to uh, want to get out of that data <clears throat> so um, with uh, suitable caution however uh, dicks can be modified like any other form of list so we can append elements to a list um, uh, by using the simple l append command and excuse the uh, the pun there boris johnson getting dicks done so um the dick command offers many powerful options and so we can look for the keys and then we can pull out individual members so you can see there with the, the keys subcommand on family returns the keys and then we can use those any one of those keys to access a data entry and uh, once again using the for each uh, command uh, dicks can be easily iterated over although the dict command itself is quite uh, powerful and does have its own internal iteration call um, however for error testing purposes if we try and pull out a non-existent entry using a non-existent key and we will get an error so it's always useful to test the existence of a key in the dictionary and if it exists then it will return the index of that key so because everything is string it's possible to make use of the string command and um, so what we've got here is mapping string mapping 
And the idea here is that we could take uh, the word William and swap it with Billy. And we could take the word James and swap it with Jim. And the string into which those substitutions will take place is um, family. And then you can see we've got set family and substitute family. So the way in which this will be read, of course, is things in bracket, square brackets are executed first. So the innermost one, which is list William, Billy, James, Jim, will be executed first, the, the value substituted after map, and then that will be, the string map function will be executed. Um, the content of family will be substituted. And then once all that operation has taken place, it'll be reassigned to family. We can also give them as literals. So this is swapping tabs out for, um, or removing a tab rather, and um, <coughs> swapping a new line and, and inserting a space. And uh, so, for instance, we get the results here. Four name, Billy Jim, surname, Gibbings, Dob, 010756. Now, let me just go back to <coughs> our slide <coughs> uh, 23. So let me just uh, go back and, uh, to my slide tray and pick it up. Um, there we are. No, was it 23? 23. There we are. There we are, yeah. Um, if we've got a string which um, is um, um, a, a list of elements, um, to, uh, say a CSV string, um, then we can uh, just split it simply by using the um, command split, uh, provide the string and the separator between them, and it will return a list with those elements split. And similarly, if we want to um, take a space separated list and turn it to a CSV list, we can use the join command and specify the separator. It could be any separator and then return the list to us here as a CSV. Let me just go back again. See where we got to. Okay, so um, we can use um, 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 a number of uh, other commands to play around with um, making lists of uh, uh, CSV separated lists. So we've got swaps list. This is our substitution um, for mapping and string mapping swaps A, B, C, D, and see we've got a space in, in there as well. <clears throat> so this would um, result in creating a CSV to list and string mapping reverse. Uh, so what we've done there is just swap these around. So a space will become a comma and then um, that will turn our list to CSVs. Right, so um, a little bit break at that point. Um, anybody who's been to a slug meeting will know that in Shropshire, the lads eat lots of pork pies when they meet in the pub. So uh, why make an exception today? Let's move on. So uh, procedures um, <clears throat> uh, expand the command set uh, so we can make some useful tools. And uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> we've uh, got a simple string there. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I should have had a close comma, close quote in there. Sorry about that. But this is a simple example of that. Proc my, my proc string return a low string. So that would take the, the argument string, uh, substitute it, and return its value. Uh, however, um, it might be the case that um, we have a proc uh, and it's just somewhere along the line called without a value or the wrong number of values. 
um, what we can do is uh, set a default. And the way in which that's done is by, as you can see, we've got this, uh, the string argument. If we put the argument in, in, a, in a, as a list, and the second element of the list becomes a default value if no value is offered for string, which is uh, very useful. Um, most procs uh, in um, and the tickle script are var a variable uh, fixed length rather. Uh, so you might have string one, string two, string three, or value one, value two. However, variable lengths are permitted. So the way in which that would uh, work is we've got a little example here. We've got opts and args. And args is a reserved word because that will be interpreted as a variable list. So um, um, we could just offer my proc one one um, value and args could be an empty string but we're assuming here that we're going to pass some value into it so what this will do is uh, if we want to do some kind of uh, uh, um, processing on this uh, information that may be supplied here which may vary we can use this as a, a subcommand up to the subcommand and then if it's a then we will do something with args. If it's D, we will do something with args. And if it's none of those, it just um, set a result value, which is empty, and then return it. And that's really useful because it gives our a, a code a bit more oomph and uh, allows us to uh, build up something a bit more sophisticated and not worry about um, having complex... Uh, um, lists of, um, of variables in the procedure definition. So um, the previous example could have been done using ifs, of course. So in this case, we set our initial re re result value and we could go through the list in this, in this sort of way. Choices are up to the programmer, uh, of course. Uh, I, I tend to use switch more than than if. Um, now, if we've got um, if we've got um, this um, procedure defined, uh, what would happen if the arguments um, uh, C is uh, as, as set for the option. We don't have one on here. And what would happen if we had a value seven? Um, we, would, we would start to have one or two issues. But um, what we can do is uh, begin to offer uh, some form of error checking very, very easily. So you can see what we've got here is create an array of switches and um, opt A, as we saw a list of options there, A and B, uh, opt A will have switches one, two, and three, and uh, option B will have switches four, five, and six. And see, so what will happen if we've got C and switch seven? Well, we can just put a, a simple uh, checker in there which will return an error message and give us uh, a message and location in the execution stack so it's easy to go back and to uh, uh, correct errors in our script so it's our little message there so this will uh, search through um, the list of, of eligible items for the value that's been given. And if it's not found, it will, it's minus one, it will um, present this information to us. It will set an error message, expected values. So join there is taking all those values 
and uh, making a string out of them. So it's list values, whatever it is, or, um, but we've got a particular value and then it will return that error message. So we can see if we can drop that into our little script. So this is what we had before on the starting uh, definitions and then we can do our error checking and then uh, how we're going to respond to it. It's all very helpful. So, <clears throat> um, the uh, the opening line <clears throat> will provide us uh, with, a, with, a, with a template of sorts. Um, so, um, <clears throat> if we um, pick an option and then sorry pick a command work through the commands rather and then we get to a particular option and then it will print out or do some kind of processing of information and you can see there i've used uh, a mixture of if and switch so this is if the command is a then we're going through the uh, various switches so here i've got a, a a completed version of this little template it's the sort of thing we can refer to and uh, modify for um, any more, more elaborate command we want to produce. So we've got my proc command args, set the commands A and B, and the options for A are 1, 2, 3, for B, 4, 5, 6. Set a default return value, and we can now um, include, in fact, our proc checker inside the proc itself this and this is one of the interesting things about tickle we can we can define a procedure anywhere a pr so we've got a procedure defined within a procedure um, it's not the, something you want to do all the time um, but to make um, uh, uh, things a bit more compact it, it's uh, useful to do it once in a while so we can see here, we're searching through the list of values um, and doing error checking. And if it's uh, okay and, and there's no error, it will start to process the, the command and then decide what to do with the, 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 uh, the option and values. So I thought we would take a, uh, a string and uh, start to uh, process it and then put a uh, graphic front end um, on um, the script so what we'll do is we'll make a thesaurus a searchable thesaurus and we'll make it searchable from the command line and through a gui we'll but make both the um you know, in fact, we will make a, the, the tickle and a, a knuckle gooey. Uh, and if you wonder who that bearded bloke is in the middle there, it's not my dad. It's uh, Mrs. Roger, who uh, was the the, uh, the guy who came up with the thesaurus back in the 19th century. So what we'll encounter here is uh, the creation of an executable script. We'll introduce namespaces. We will load modules. We'll use uh, knuckle widgets. We'll create windows, containers, a text widget, entry widget, a label. We will use rich text markup, uh, use variable tracing, uh, counters, and string mapping. And uh, that's the uh, little screenshot of the output that we'll get there. Okay, so using our favorite text editor, we can uh, uh, start to make our script. And because it's a script, we need to uh, uh, get uh, the shell running. But as soon as the shell starts, we transfer control to the uh, tickle shell. Uh, so every tickle controlling script has those three lines at the front. And um, so we can save that off as the Sora's tickle. Uh, open a console and then change the property of the file to an executable um, using change mod. 
and then we can run it, run it. But um, it'll do nothing. It'll just start and exit. But since we need to introduce our uh, uh, code into it, it, it's worth deciding up ahead uh, what commands and options we want, and uh, at what point will it start to run into using the GUI. And uh, I like to uh, kill two birds with one stone. And uh, what I'd like to do is to shape these ideas up into a, um, a help string. So what we've got here, if um, when the, uh, the, the uh, command is executing, um, the, the, the first value passed to it is H then um, um, it will form this help string and then return it to the terminal and exit. But you can see what we'll do here is uh, have the command load, which will choose a data file. And then we have got the instruction get. And then we've got three options. We can get an item by number get it by its entry, which is number and keyword, or return a list of keys. And we can actually do what mo most people want to do with a thesaurus, is to find a word as it occurs in some of the entries. And in fact, if we send no uh, uh, commands to the um, thesaurus tool, then it will default to running in the GUI mode. And uh, so what we're going to do is to cr create a single command to load and pass a half a megabyte plain text file, which contains the thesaurus's 989 keywords and entries. And to do that, we've got um, four uh, functions. One is the function uh, thesaurus, which is our, effectively our command itself and then uh, instructions which are used by the source which is the check which is what we spoke about before um, a function to uh, load the um, data and then one to do a sophisticated level of matching now what you can see here is that we've got two uh, colons separating the source and, and check if we just had one, it would be treated as um, a single uh, name. However, double colons in tickle, uh, as you can see here, denotes uh, a, a, what's called a namespace. And what is happening is that uh, we will create a namespace called thesaurus and check will be contained within that namespace. What it means is that if the, the, uh, the, the procedure name check, load, and match is used somewhere else, then they won't get mixed up. It'll be checked within Thesaurus. Um, and the reason why this is useful is that uh, Tickle doesn't permit any form of data encapsulation. And so um, keeping it uh, tidied away is pretty much the responsibility of the, the scripter. There are exceptions to that, um, and um, I won't deal with the, uh, the command in this presentation, but there is a, a, an object creation tool, and the variables, which is contained in the core that is, uh, which does create variables that are encapsulated, and you can't use other um, uh, tickle procedures to access that data. It can only be accessed through the object uh, oriented uh, uh, interface. So um, this is our main procedure. Um, the, the, the check and load procedures all together. So we can see we've got our thesaurus, um, our option and our arguments. We're creating now this namespace using the instruction create namespace eval 
thesaurus and there's nothing in it um, the open bracket can be used to encapsulate all of this um, I could take out the word thesaurus load so uh, thesaurus on, on check and, and thesaurus on load and down here as well and then put another brace down here I don't like doing that uh, because this could be separated by perhaps even 100 lines 200 lines at times so just leave it as an empty statement and then um, we can create uh, procedures within that namespace when we want them so this is our check command this is our load command pretty easy to uh, see there it's uh, opening the file we provide a file name to it it will load all the data that we need into a variable uh, which is itself is contained within the thesaurus namespace and then we close off that uh, file um, because it's a variable you can see that the the uh, the variable name is also preceded by um, two colons we don't need to do that for functions only for variables and um, here we have uh, our own custom uh, 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 match for doing our searches and um, this will basically if we start to read through it if we're searching for the needle in the haystack it, the first, string first in, uh, instruction will look for the needle in the haystack and return a value for its occurrence so we're just searching just the entire string this is a half a megabyte string just for where it occurs and then we can use string word start uh, to find the start of the word because needle may be a substring part of a larger string so we want to find the word start and we also want to find the word end so if we, we only want an exact match so what we want is uh, uh, to pull out a string based upon the start and the end strip out any punctuation so it could be the end of a phrase within the entry or it could be hyphenated strip all that stuff out and then uh, strip out any uh, white space around it and then we'll check to see whether needle matches the word that we found if it does super duper if it doesn't return minus one and then at the bottom here we've just got the definition of our uh, options and uh, <coughs> switches <coughs> so uh, <coughs> the next line is to check the options that are passed to the script and then our load function so um, this will uh, uh, load the, uh, the file that we want and then we can retrieve using the get instruction the various items that we want uh, so item and i've got some notes here must be a, 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 it's, a it's a string of course but it will be interpreted as a number um, and it will um, um, return um, a, a value um, between uh, the zero and uh, 989 and with entry we have to specify the uh, the key and the value and uh, yeah are you okay no. Uh, and then with keys it will re return a list of all thesaurus keys so we can see here it will uh, um, search through our thesaurus and pull out the information that we want um, I, I'm, I'm not spent too much time on this uh, and go through because um, I've got all the the, the, the scripts and the data and so on available online and I'll pass everybody the the links to that in a minute 
So for instance, we could uh, type in thesaurus get item 100 and it will return the, the name uh, and item number. And then we can use uh, the command find to search through all the, the, the data. So you can see there we've got Dick's keys thesaurus data. So we search through each key, retrieve the value for that key. And then if, if um, the, uh, uh, the, the value that we've got um, uh, forms a match with the content, it will append it to the uh, result list. So we could use an instruction such as thesaurus find beer. And with that, we're all ready to go. So all that we need to do is to uh, uh, create some kind of wrapper for the main thesaurus procedure. We need to specify where the, the, the data is uh, kept and that will be kept with our script. So what we use is the command info script. So that um, is an internal value kept by the interpreter, uh, which uh, denotes the location from where the script is being executed. And it will normalize it for the computer that we're running on, the platform that we're running on. And <clears throat> and then um, we can uh, uh, convert that to a standard directory name. And um, we can take that variable path and then load our basic data, which is thesaurus.dict, and um, then we're ready to go. If we're not, um, yeah, then we're ready to go. If, um, it says that if arg c not equal zero, if th that of course is testing to see if we've just typed thesaurus on the on the the command line. If we um, if we've typed um, um, some um, something there, you know, the get or whatever, that will all be passed as a single value. Remember, I mentioned before we can use the open brace close brace to separate a string into its component parts. So this would unpack something like uh, um, find beer, which would be a string, single string. It will split it out into two, into its words and pass it as two separate strings. So it would be thesaurus get beer. And once it's done that, it will return the value to the, the console and exit. Now, if we're going to make a GUI, um, <clears throat> uh, using Knuckle, that's all what we need to do. Um, just, um, where are we? 30 lines, including white space. Um, as I said before, uh, Knuckle um, is fully GTK compliant, uses native widgets, has the desktop style. Um, the the, uh, the widget set is an enhanced set, so I've got a lot more widgets in there than the basic GTK set. And uh, things which I in implemented in, in um, Knuckle, which aren't available in the basic uh, uh, GTK set is uh, undo, redo on text, and also implemented Pango markup. So it's possible to tag markup, and we'll look at that in a minute, on text. Um, however, you've got things such as the lists, buttons, and uh, labels, which are Pango enabled, and you want the times to take data from one widget and transfer it over to another. Well, if you want to take uh, something from uh, a marked up text buffer, in the standard API and have it uh, displayed in a, in a, in a uh, label uh, just using the uh, uh, standard um, uh, GTK API. You can't do it, you've got to play around with it. But uh, uh, I spent many an hour implementing this in, uh, in Knuckle. 
So let's just go back to this. We can see here package require knuckle. So it will load it from the, uh, the drive. We can create our first container, which is a vertical box, V box. And then we can create an entry and set the font at sans 14. And then we can create a text and it'll use markup. And then uh, we can set margins, top, bottom, left, and sorry, yeah, sorry, uh, left, right, sorry, top and bottom margins. And then we can add uh, a label, for, give us some uh, uh, status feedback. Uh, so we've got label and we can use variables. Uh, the use of um, um, variables for widgets is uh, pretty much a tickle or TK um, feature. It's not a, a GTK feature. So we'll create, create a variable called stats and this will be in the global uh, namespace and the text will be lined to the left. And then we set a tracker variable zero. We can create a standard uh, API tag, which is create tag um, red foreground red. Um, using this instruction here, use markup one automatically uh, creates a minimalist HTTP um, tag set, such as you know uh, within the uh, open and close. Uh, uh, greater than less than sign things like you know like bold italic underline strike through big uh, small expanded and uh, various color foreground and background uh, settings all done for us okay so um, the entry here we want to, um, to respond to an activate event in other words the uh, the enter or the return key is being pressed on the keyboard. So we've also assigned some data, associated data with this widget. Uh, now this data association is not a TK feature, it's a GTK feature. So we can um, 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 pass little bits of data to uh, um, the widget or keep it close to the widget uh, for when we're working and what we've got there is keeping details of the uh, the name of the text widget so we set our stats at zero um, set temp as uh, empty string and then um, for each element that we find in our category so cat stands for category so we've thesaurus find and then t is the text that's contained in the entry so it is find t in our thesaurus and then return a, a catalog of the categories that it belongs is found in and then what we will do is create a markup string so we've made temp and then we'll append the the entry cat with some pango markup and a new line and append it to temp and then we will get the entry from the, the thesaurus and um, that will uh, be uh, separated by a couple of new lines and then we increase our counter for the display so D is the data that we've set, so it's these percentage of substitution strings, which is the um, name of the uh, text widget. We'll clear it, and then we can set it to the, uh, the keys and values that we've found. And then, once we've done that, we'll tell the text widget to search for the entry that we were looking for, and then mark them up as in red. Nice and simple. Um, and then we uh, find down here the way in which we pack all these elements together. So we've got our main container. We add an ent, the ent entry into it. Then we have the text, and that will be filling the uh, uh, horizontal and vertical um, uh, 
dimensions of the, the container and then it will expand when the window gets bigger and smaller and then we will add this the uh, the status a label in there as well and, and, and uh, fill that out and then we can make our final top level window which we'll call nova lug demo homebrew thesaurus we can add all these in by uh, uh, assigning the child of the window to the container and then specify width and height and then if um, the close button is picked in the top right corner or the window closed for whatever the reason, the script will exit. And then finally, we tell the thesaurus to load its data. And then at the bottom there, we go into a main loop. So um, we just won't drop off at the end. That's optional. I'll just include it in there. So pretty straightforward. And that will come up with something like, looking like this. So you can see we've got our main container. Um, the uh, knock all icon is set by default, that is configurable. We've got our full um, GTK compliant um, look. It matches the overall uh, style of the, um, the system we're using and uh, is easy enough to read. And also, um, the thing which uh, the uh, knuckle widget will do by default is put in the appropriate scroll bars. So we don't need to mess around including those ourselves. Uh, whenever I, I develop something, I, I live by the maxing that I develop it once and then reuse it over and over again. So if I find something good, even if I've done it well in Tickle, I would rather spend the, the time um, co recoding it in C and then bring it into my core uh, because then I don't have to worry about having separate uh, packages all over the place. And um, those of us from this side of the pond will recognize that as Peggy from a, a sitcom that was on television years. And she was always uh, a want to be. She was a maid in a holiday camp, and um, she nowadays we would probably see her as having a, a crush on this character, Miss Cathcart. Miss Cathcart was one of the entertainers of the, the the holiday resort, and she always wanted to be a bit like Miss Cathcart, because Miss Cathcart had the bling. Uh, if we implement this in plain TK, then we we won't get much bling. Uh, but once we've made all those changes, what we can do now is make it a uh, system command for us when we log in. So we can copy our thesaurus tickle script, uh, copy it to thesaurus, uh, and then copy thesaurus to our home directory and drop it in the bin, and then copy our data over into the bin and then if we just type into the console, find happiness, it will return us this. Um, and um, if we obviously didn't put any arguments and this uh, is what we would have appear, of course, then we'd have to enter our data in. If we wanted to do a pure TK version of this, uh, here's the, 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 the script to do that. So we would have to load a TK script. And once again, set our uh, stats zero, create an entry, create a frame, manually create um, uh, scroll bars and uh, scroll bar handlers. Uh, then we've got our label. And you see the way in which the, um, the elements are created and, and uh, uh, packed. Uh, is not the same as uh, Knockall. So um, it's not a, a trivial task trying to get Knockall to behave like uh, Tickle. It, it, it could be, but you know, you can write um, scripts to handle it, but um, I, um, Knockall attempts to follow the way in which uh, uh, um, the uh, GTK API wants us to do things. So before, for instance, we had, uh, if I just go back a couple, you see here we had uh, a configure 
a, a signal handler directly on the widget. Um, but with um, TK, we have to use the bind command, bind it to the widget. And this is the widget path, right? not just simply the name of it, and then the event that we want to bind it to. Um, years ago, I did, um, when I was baking the move from uh, TK to Knuckle, um, I did write a, 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 a tickle script to emulate uh, the bind command. But to be honest, it, I just thought, well, why do I want to do that? So I've got more control actually in the, in the GTK API than I have with, tick, uh, with, with within TK. And then finally, we can pack everything together. Uh, so pack goes into, uh, we've got pack my entry. So um, the, the dot there signifies that it's going into the top level, a top level. So um, TK will make a top level window and then we pack directly into that. So that happens invisibly to us. If we wanted a second top level window, we'd have to define it. But within uh, Knuckle, we have to uh, specify that window first of all. So that's uh, adding the entries, filling the X axis. Then we pack our scroll bars. We've got one on the right there, one on the bottom. And then we pack our text. And the text is a top uh, left packed. And then we drop in our label at the bottom, which is behind Homer Simpson. So we can see the two side by side. So this is uh, uh, the the GUI using uh, GTK, GTK API, and this is using OpenX. We could we could do similar work with the tags on here, to be honest. Um, and uh, I could fiddle around with the fonts, but um, um, I didn't want to do that. Um, for people who do want to stay with TK, there is something called TTK, which is uh, got uh, uh, in, uh, styles associated with it, but they will never look, they will never be your system compliant styles. They will be a set of presets which might look like um, something similar, but not the same. And there we go. Any any questions? I think you would need to be a real uh, programming expert, probably in that language, to to ask you a meaningful question. <laughs> well, just ask a general one if you wish. Well, my kind of question is: so you said you also did some C and stuff like that. Yeah. From from without maybe going into some specifics, I'm trying to figure out what is it that makes you go to Tickle versus, you know, let's say Python, Ruby, or other types of languages. What is it that you you feel that that language gives you that you <coughs> don't? Well, I think historical in in my case because um, um, I started off um, ex uh, exploring the creation of. Um, 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 my uh, little translation engine years ago, back in the mid uh, '90s, and um, it's a, it's a very long story. Uh, but the, the the gist of it was um, um, when I was in television graphics, uh, the great thing to want want was a, a Silicon Graphics workstation, and that ran. Uh, Irix and uh, so Irix and, and Unix was the, the way forward and um, um, the firm I was at, uh, the old pile of kit, I ended up having a, a, a silicon graphics network to um, look after and um, I uh, remember getting a, a, a book on um, motif programming and then I thought oh gee and then I got this uh, book on um, Linux programming and it said, uh, yeah, you can try this in Motif, but why don't you use this fantastic new language? This is 1998 called Tickle TK. And um, then it does it all for you. And I thought, oh gosh, yeah. And then it did strings and I thought, well, yeah, this is where I want to work in. And so it purely historical for me that um, I started working with, um, 
um, uh, tickle um, because um, that was the first thing that was around. The only other thing I could have looked at at the time was uh, uh, Pearl, and Pearl didn't have any uh, graphic interface, and uh, and um, um, the, the the editor which you saw earlier on, I originally wrote a, um, a TK version of that, and um, that was okay. But then um, I did, I, you know, uh, I didn't like using it. I, I wanted something that would match my uh, GNOME desktop uh, as time went by, and so I went with that. Uh, also, with regard to using um, Python. Um, it looks a bit alien to me, and also when when I was uh, uh, looking to code, um, um, some of the softwares that I was uh, looking after had their own internal scripting um, interfaces, which were in TK. And uh, also uh, at the time uh, uh, we were dabbling with Renderman and the default scripting language for Renderman. I don't know what it is now. But in those days, it was TK, and then uh, uh, when Alias brought out Maya, the uh, they used Mel now, but they used to use TK, and um, um, so it was the thing to go to back in the day, and and I've stayed with it, and I've stayed with it because the um, the um, um, the string manipulation tools are so easy. Um, and it makes life very, very simple and uh, easy to go with. Also, um, um, because I, I work with Knuckle, um, um, there's very little difficulty in, in making a shared object library run inside a, 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 a tickle script. There's minimal requirement. It's very, very simple, very straightforward to get uh, running. If you, um, let me just, uh, if you want to get all this um, um, stuff that I've been talking about today, I'll just load up my browser. I do have a um, uh, website with all these on. Uh, I'll share my screen. It's just loading slowly at the moment. Uh, have, has anyone done any TK or Tickle programming in the past? In a long past, I was uh, that. To, to your point, that was the uh, kind of the only thing you could do with uh, with uh, Pearl. yeah. At the time, or at least the only thing I was able to do with Pearl, let's put it that way. Um, I ran an operating system called QNX and they had Pearl on it, and it, you could you could port uh, TCL and TK over to it. So I have to admit, I haven't thought about it in quite a while, but uh, Knuckle was new to me, so I thought that was actually very interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I, I wasn't the, the, the original developer of it, it was originally started by a uh, um, um, German fella named Baum, and uh, he uh, just found it. I, I find that in, to be honest, I find that in the uh, the uh, the GNOME world and the, the GTK world, no one's interested in Tickle, and in the Tickle world, no one's interested in uh, uh, GTK. <laughs> um, so it, the Venn diagram, they don't overlap. Well, I think everybody's got their own vested interests. Um, I, I, I met, call me a cynic if you like. I, I don't see why life should get more difficult. And um, um, I do find that um, just as, you know, as an outsider, somebody who does it to support his own research and interests, that... Um, the general trend is to make programming coding more difficult and make it more arcane to prevent people actually making a headway with what they can uh, work with. 
So when John Osterhout uh, left, uh, I think it was at Berkeley originally, and went to Sun, uh, he went there to do their scripting uh, development work. Uh, and um, they lost interest in um, TK and and uh, and uh, Tickle because they decided JavaScript was the way forward. Well, if if you write in Java, the default GUI is provided by TK. Yep. And yeah, Java. JavaScript or similar in name yep. only. That's about that's where it and, and it runs slowly. <laughs> and um, uh, there were um, um, tickle uh, uh, web browser plugins developed back in the nineties and early noughties, but no one's interested in, in it. So it sort of drifted by, by the by. Um, but it doesn't mean that as a, a valid language, uh, it uh, can't be used and developed. Um, there are plenty of um, uh, sophisticated projects using uh, Knuckle, uh, sorry, not Knuckle, uh, TK. Uh, uh, much of the, uh, I know it sounds terrible to say, so I don't approve of it myself, but much of the online gambling business in the UK is driven using TK. Um, 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 not my sort of thing, but um, let me use for many a year to come, then, uh, William. Well, it could be, it could be. I don't think it will vanish. Everybody's distro has uh, a TK on it. <laughs> You'll have the latest version, 8.661, I think it is. It's uh, interesting yeah. how quickly you could actually throw up a uh, GTK based interface there uh, i mean obviously it was only simple but uh it wasn't a lot of bother was it oh well absolutely that's the point if, let me let me first of all let me give you uh another share of my screen and you can actually uh go to can you see this now yes yeah so i've uh especially for you lads uh, i've uh, put everything on here so if you go to uh my uh page um, ignore this malarkey up here. If you just go to www.knockle.org, you should get there. Um, um, and um, following this uh, link, you will get to all of the slides. Oh, and by the way, all the slides I've been presenting you uh, now um, are, are presented on a um, slide presenter I wrote myself in uh, Knuckle <laughs> because I just got f so fed up of uh, uh, running um, things like uh, um, uh, what do you call it um, Google slides and slowing my machine down so I thought well shit I can't be bothered with this and uh, I wrote the innards of my slide presentation, pro slide presentation software in a half a morning uh, and uh, was happy with it. So um, that's the, those are the slides. The slides are all there. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, can you see you scrolling down? Uh, uh, the um, knuckle script and um, if you go further down, you, you'll see there's a, a readme and um, downloadable zip file with all that content in there. If you want to install Knuckle, I, before you had to, before before this weekend, you would have had to go to SourceForge, download and compile your own. Uh, but um, I thought, well, bugger it. Um, um, you can just download it with a, a, an installer from here. And uh, there's a whole pile of goodness in there. There's around about 120 odd widgets in it, and uh, a whole pile of commands. Uh, you can cr there's a um, I've got bindings to Cairo, so you can write your own uh, um, um, uh, widgets. Um, I've got mega widgets in there uh, to do um, advanced page layouts. Um, I've got um, um, front end to the uh, uh, 
the, the pix buff so you can do slides and so on in it but if i just go back to this you can see if i just oops share my share my whole whole of my screen stop screen share and share screen uh, oh. oh, it's not letting me share the whole. How can I share a whole screen on this one? Uh, hmm. How do I? You, you can't anymore, William. You can't. Oh, right. Okay then. Count on uh, virtual machines. If you put something into a virtual machine, then you can share it from that outside of that. But other than that, you oh, can't. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm an avid Jitsi user. So. Uh, but yeah, if I just share this, uh, share share this again. Uh, can you see that uh, coming up there? Is this you won't be able. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see the floating tool palette that I've got there but uh, um, on this uh, let me just load those slides again uh, gosh you can't see any of this unfortunately all we see is a picture in a circle yeah oh dear yeah it should have come back up but um, you see, yeah, see the you can yeah. see it again yeah so um, 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 yeah, like on here, I implemented my own blackboard. Neat. It's just a text widget and you know, zoom in and zoom in and out on it. Because I got so fed up of uh, third party stuff, and uh, we can drop in pictures as well. Uh, so that was useful. Uh, where else? The, the slide tray. All, all these. Uh, actually, what I did with these was to. I, I do have uh, my own editor, but uh, I, I just. So I need to do them quickly. Put everything together in OpenOffice, export them as a PDF, and then um, I've got my own uh, extractor. I use uh, PDF processing tools in the background to export them all out. And then it loads them all in again. Um, um, I've got a recording facility on here. Um, and if I just go back to my slides, you'll see here. Uh, let me pick a suitable video source. I'll use my other camera. Um, you should see me pop up in the bottom corner. So I use uh, piping into uh, the script to uh, pipe the output from MPEG player with my phone as a, as a, as a, as a camera um, and then dis display it straight on here. Or in, uh, and, you know, sort of lots of uh, easy things can be done um, with uh, the tools um, and um, Unfortunately, as I if you can't see the desktop, you won't see it loading up quickly. Uh, but if I um, if I if I load in the um, the final project, you can see how quickly it runs. And I don't use a fast machine. John may have gathered the uh, this the other day when I say I use. Uh, low speed kit and the computer I've got here, you know, you can pick them up for 50 quid. I, I don't believe in uh, spending too much money on my kit. Let me just uh, get that. How much is a quid in dollars? Uh, about one pound 20. Oh, sorry, uh, in dollars, sorry, about one dollar 20, isn't it, I think? Okay. One yeah. thirty or so, yeah. So it's like, you know, 50 bucks is, 50 quid, 50 dollars <laughs> or something. Um, so um, if I share the, the, the screen for the, the homebrew um, thesaurus, so that, that's where it is. And, uh, you know, I can type in there, uh, peace. Oh, 
Oh dear, I've lost it there. What's happened there? We can't, can't set, oh dear. I've done something wrong. Sorry about that, lads. Can't do that. What's happened there? The pains of live demo. <sighs> I don't know what I've done there. But I'll just load the TK K1 up anyway. That, that should work. Well, this has been quite a presentation. Did you prepare this whole thing just for us, or, or is this a, a canned yeah. presentation you have to use with lots of people? No, I just did it for you lads, yeah, no, no problem. There we go, so here it is. Uh... Oh, that's super. See, that's how quickly it works, you see. <clears throat> Uh, the way in which I, uh, I ha you, you can also uh, embed uh, processes within containers, <laughs> which uh, I haven't take full taken full advantage of. But um, if I show you uh, my own um, pet project, I won't load any data in, um, but it'll come up in a second. If you can't see the screen, the whole screen, that would have been better. If it's loading now there's tons and tons of modules to load but now that should come back up hang on a second can you see that big beast yes yeah so what i'll load a file up yeah please ignore the data uh, that comes in uh, you probably have to, it's all in Chinese anyway. So uh, you can see over here, I use um, a list. So um, things which I introduced on that, you can see the list will actually uh, wrap at some point, it will wrap. Uh, it's running a bit slow because I've got um, Zoom on it. Zoom is not cheap. Yeah, and you see all these tabs up here. Um, th so you can see there's a thesaurus one there. So if I just say the, the word assurance and hit seven on the keyboard, that brings up um, uh, a thesaurus. And so that is a standalone module. And I just r comment out the, uh, the run, I have a little demo, a proc in every um, module, uh, just um, what you call it, uh, comment that out and then just load it in. Um, and so lots of other dictionaries in here, so um, for Chinese. And um, I can, um, yeah, let's have a, this, this, yeah, um, other things that it'll do. Remember, I was talking about um, using arrays. If I click this button here, um, you see this box down here, the grey one. That's a translation engine. Uh, uh, you cannot can't really easily translate from uh, uh, old. Old, relatively old Chinese into English. Well, even modern Chinese and translate very well. But you see, if you just click from one to the other, and that uh, is pretty pretty well real time. And uh, there, there's around about a quarter of a million entries in the uh, in the translation engine, and it's working within the speed of a click. And then um, other things which I've put on here. Um, uh, you can see the pop up down there. Can you see that pop up? Is the pop up menu showing? There is, yeah. So you can see I've got. A, I can search PDF files, do a grep on um, files for Chinese, Sanskrit, Pali, Tibetan dictionaries, going all the way down. And um, I even put versification tools in there, old Chinese, and um, um, I've probably got not many headers in here. No, there's no headers in this. But uh, I, I've got a hierarchical tree on this side, which uh, um, um, does um, um, shows the structure of the text. 
but I, I've not got any headings in here. Um, also, what, one of the great things I could do with uh, uh, with uh, Knockle and, and and TK was um, I can output my texts uh, as an ODT file, and it's a real bastard trying to program open document files. Um, because they are uh, zipped up, uh, XML, zipped right. up um, XML documents, and um, because everything's a string, to put all rather than using, I do have a version using DOM, but uh, which is experimental. But in this, I hand coded the XML export, and all the markup goes in to the the text, so you can see these passages here when they're being exported as a parallel text into a table which can cover like 70 odd pages or whatever um, all of the xml markup goes in through using string mapping and um, the uh, the translation engine down here works by using uh, arrays so uh, what it will do is uh, look at an array of various clips from the source language. There might be one, two, three, four, five characters in length. And so it will use those uh, keys as to search an individual line of text. And then if it meets a match, it will put it into an output string, which is shown down here. It's not... A, it's not a, a bulletproof way of translating but it means that when you look at something and think oh gosh what could that be or what have i translated that in the past um it will appear so uh, and other things you know uh, click over you can see this coming up on the side down there yeah. so that literally went through very very quickly i, I used to have this automatic uh, but i've press a button and uh, pull the data in. So this is use, all using Pango formatting, Pango formatting up here. So yeah, it does quite a lot. Um, that's, a, that's an impressive app, without a doubt. It, it's a, it does quite a lot, yeah. And uh, I mean, other things I've put on there. Um, oh, you won't see that. You won't see the uh, splash screens and so on. So I, I implemented a, a proper splash screen in Knuckle to um, Another tool which um, aspect uh, which I built into Knuckle. This wasn't in it from the original developer. I, I put this in myself, uh, and this will load up. And I thought, well, even I forget what my own code will do at times. So I started to, and I nearly nearly finished it now. Put together which uh, what I would describe as a um, let's share my screen again, a um, uh, there we go, a, 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 like a, a a dashboard. So can you see um, over here? You've got in yellow all the commands that are usable. I haven't documented all these in here yet, but if I um, click on say box. It will automatically show how you can make boxes. Um, or I built in introspection, so uh, if you want to know what the op uh, it, the options in an actual release of the the source there is, it will tell you what they are and all the substitution strings. It will list all the commands that are in there that are for a particular uh, item, and then also give you the sample script. So as I say, even I forget what I put in these these bloody things. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a lot of code in a lot of modules, um, and, um, and so even I forget. So I thought, well, I'll put it all in one spot. So if I forget, it's there, um, and if um, if I need any more, then I put it onto my website with. Um, um, uh, proper documentation pages and lots of um, source code and, and how to do various things 
Or also a thing that can be done is, uh, whilst this is all interpreted, um, compiled versions can be uh, produced uh, using uh, critic, what's called critical and um, free wrap. Um, although the code needs to be modified somewhat uh, in order to take advantage of, uh, of uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, compiling everything together. And the way in which that works is by creating an enclosed virtual file space, which is absolutely brilliant. The guys who developed it are really, really clever, clever guys. Uh, but it means that you can package everything together and just send it off. And uh, one, uh, one project I worked on a couple of years ago, there was a guy in the States and he was running a Mac and uh, he was, uh, had some Linux familiarity, but what he actually had was um, uh, Linux running in a virtual uh, um, a window on his Mac. And so he was running uh, not, uh, my text editor on his Macintosh through virtualization. Uh, uh, there are uh, Windows and uh, Macintosh uh, branches, but I have nothing at all to do with those. But it does mean that there's lots of help and support out there for people. And you can see this is, I'm not running on um, uh, GTK3. I'm still compiling against GTK 2.4. Uh, I do realize there will be a time when I'll need to change over. Uh, but um, it still it's, probably largely works though, right? GTA, it's probably still largely works because uh, GTA 2 stuff still runs on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I have got the, the, I thought, I thought the leap from, well, I'd probably make the leap from two to four. I did start to put together the, the, the basic bones for making a, 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 T, a GTK3 version of Knuckle, but there are so many deprecated um, functions in there. I thought, oh, no, I'll just wait till they know what they're doing um, and then make, make the change. Um, there are lots of um, um, tricks that I do in Knuckle in order to get um, styles working properly. Uh, because you have to have in, in two, you have to have a resource file to specify style features, some style features, not all. And so, in order to get that to work, you have to run a resource file to change the the appearance of a of certain appearance elements in in a widget. And so, uh, I put all all that in there. But everything everything works. You know, um, uh, the earlier versions also had support for the um, uh, known canvas, but I don't do that anymore. Um, um, I, I could bring it back to life again, but I've got no real reason why I would want to do that. Uh, you, you see this uh, thing coming up on screen. I, uh, oh, I need to change it. Yeah, need a little bit more work on that. Uh, but this is uh, working on the drawing area. So, you, you can see here, I can use, uh, uh, I wrote a parser to interpret uh, Cairo commands. Um, and um, put a whole pile of other things in. I, I, I put a clock in here. Oh, it's a bit sm I would need to work on that as well. But I put a clock in there. Uh, that does work. It's, it's just off screen. <laughs> uh, That's... Uh that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty interesting. We're we're cropping up on the the quarter after mark, so I probably want to close out this recording before too long. Oh right. But, okay. Uh, well, yeah. So you may as well. Anybody else have uh, have any questions that they want a recording before I turn it down? Not me. <laughs> but this has been a very good uh, presentation. It's uh, a lot of information here. I tried my best. I did notice one or two spelling mistakes that crept through. I will go round and uh, alter those. No, uh, we, just, we just assumed that was uh, uh, English usage instead of American. <laughs> yeah, proper, pro, 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 uh, proper, proper English, right? Yeah. I'm going to stop this recording. Give me a second.